Bellhaven Brewery, 80 shilling. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. I've got one here from, is it Green King? Is it the Bellhaven Brewery? I don't fucking know. <laughs> this is a convoluted story. Sit down, this could take a while. Right, Bellhaven. Scottish brewery from a place called Dunbar, which ain't too far from Edinburgh. And it's, it's the oldest brewery, or oldest working brewery, in Scotland at the moment and it's it's under the umbrella of Green King well I say under the umbrella it's been taken over by Green King and it was taken over in 2005 by Green King for 187 million that's the Scottish brewery for 187 million pounds now you might think that's a lot of money but they own a lot of pubs and they are one of the most popular ale producers in Scotland they were independent up until then and Green King took them over. Now they do a lot of traditional British beers but they've also gone into the craft beer market as well and they're doing a bit of both now. I got that in a box and it's the only reason I'm fucking drinking it is because it's come in a box, it's in a clear bottle and it, it was in a box full of Green King beer and every single one of them was in a clear bottle. And it's one of my fucking pet annoyances when it comes to beer, is brewers putting beer into clear bottles. It, it, it just winds me up, that's as far as I'm gonna go. But Green King seemed to be one of the worst out a lot. They've put all the old Speckled Hen, the Golden Hen, the Abbott Reserve, the Green King IPA, the Abbott IPA, the Bellhaven stuff, just everything is in a clear fucking bottle. It's as if they've got an inferiority complex and they think that everybody needs to see their beer in a bottle before they buy it. You don't, just put it in a fucking brown bottle, you fucking bastards. Anyway, relax. It's been one of them days today. Anyway, calm, I'm calm. They've been going since 1719, not Green King, this Bellhaven place, and they, as I say, they're the oldest brewers in Scotland. They're brewery is grade one listed so that's how old it is because it's the oldest working brewery in in scotland the oldest surviving one and you know i suppose they've got to make that grade one because that's part of scottish heritage isn't it now <laughs> they say that they're the oldest the oldest record of that brewery is in 1719 but there's rumors going around that there was actually beer being brewed before that because the oldest record that they've got is of a brewery relocation but it doesn't say where they relocated from but the evidence suggests that they go back to the 12th century to Benedictine monks who brewed beer on an island I think it's the Isle of May I think it's called which is you know obviously in Scotland and if they could find evidence to prove that that was there that would be one of the oldest breweries in Europe you know, that's, that's no mean feat when you consider the German breweries were, I think, you know, just a century before, the oldest brewery in the world, the Weinstefana. And it's quite popular too, believe it or not. It goes to the USA, it goes to Russia, it goes to Sweden, and France. They import it into France as well, because they know their beer shit and they can't produce good beer there. Too busy drinking wine. And you know what I think of wine drinkers. Anyway, one last thing about this brewery too. They used to, before it was taken over by the Caledonian Brewery, they used to uh, bottle and brew the Innocent Gun 
stuff as well. I think that finished in about 2011. So, you know, they've got a bit of history and pedigree, this brewery. And, you know, if they could find that link to the 12th century, I mean, that'd be it. Green King. Well, this is the thing. Green King owned them, right? Guess who owns Green King? There's a company from Hong Kong called CK Assets. They're the one that owns Green King and it owns Bellhaven. So they're owned by a company from Hong Kong. Effectively, Chinese now, but there you go. That's the state of some of the old British brewers. Anyway, enough about that. Let's get on to the beer. Now, I've had, <clears throat> I've had this hidden under the desk because it's in the clear bottle. I want it to spend the least amount of time as possible in the light because of this clear glass. So I don't really want to spend too much time telling you what it is. Here is the label, 80 shilling. There you go. Here's the back. All right. 500 mil bottle, 3.9%. The shilling names typical traditional Scots ales refer to the historic wholesale price of a cask is that eight shillings were top shelf stuff so only the best ingredients are used in our classic what the fuck are they do? is this scottish or something are they are they putting stuff in here that an englishman can't understand because that's the sort of stuff they do uh, it's a classic something with local malts and two top two top <laughs> two hop varieties creating a rich copper colour beer with malty toffee and soft fruit character. Okie dokie. To be honest, I'm not a massive fan of Green King. It's rare that they do a decent beer. I retried the old speckled hen out of the can. It wasn't too bad, it wasn't the greatest, but it was okay. Anyway, let's get this open. Let's see what's going on. Right, there is a thistle. That is the emblem of the People's Republic of Jokistan. And let's get this beer into a glass. Well, at least it don't smell skunky. That is, that's a good thing. There is some toffee malt there, I will say that. I don't know whether it's me, but Green King seemed to have a unique strain of yeast and all the aromas from their beer, it was the same in the old Bob that they do and it's the same in the old speckled hen that they do as well. But I'm getting that, it's like a toffee, it's like a toffee and there's something else in there as well. I don't know what that is. But I only get it in Green King beers. Oh well. As I say, they're not... They're not my favourite brewery, but they occasionally come up with some decent stuff. Now the Abbott Reserve was quite nice. I quite like that. A lot of people don't like that because of the spirit alcohol backbone. That doesn't bother me because I do like me Belgian doubles and triples. So I'm used to that. Right, here it is in the glass. Um, aroma. It doesn't smell that great to be honest. It, it smells like a Green King beer. Very reminiscent of that old Bob. There's caramel and toffee that I am getting on there. More toffee than caramel, to be honest. But there's a, I don't know, it's a, it's a weird aroma that just comes from the Green King beers. I'm sure it must have something to do with the fact it's in their clear bowl. But that's by the by. But that's all I'm getting at the moment, it's just the malt. Really not getting much at all. I think this is going to be one of them ones where I'm going to need to, uh, I'm going to need to taste it to get 
what it is. There it is in the glass, clear as a bell. One finger, white head. Let's get it down the hatch. Wish me luck. Bottoms up. Mm. Not bad. Not bad. Quite, quite a bit of toffee malt in there. And that's about it really. Toffee malt, the body is quite weak on it. And there is like a caramel, more biscuity type finish on it too. But the hops don't really come through on this at all. I thought there'd be more hop character in it. Mm. A slight honey on it, honey, toffee malt, quite, quite sweet, but it's got that, and I'm really struggling, I'm really trying to think, but that there's a, there's a flavour that goes all the way through these Green King beers, definitely something to do with the yeast. And I, I just can't put my finger on what that flavour is, but it's it's always there. It's, it's almost like a a sweet a sweet honey and vanilla type flavour, but it doesn't taste as nice as it sounds. Yeah, there's toffee malt on there, getting that no real hot bitterness. It's very, very average. I would have preferred some more spice on it, a bit more hop character coming through, a bit of, you know, a bit, little bit more herbal notes, that type of earthy, you know, hop type flavor, but there's none of that at all. It's just, it's just malt and green king. This is quite sweet compared to other, to other ales. And it's not bad, and you know, it sounds like I'm knocking it. I just think it's very, very average. Yeah, it doesn't really do much for me at all, to be honest. It's just an average run of the mill ale. So what's the verdict on Bellhaven? Well, aside from the fact that it's sold in clear bottles and it's very, it's just very average in my opinion. That's what I think anyway. And it's got, it's got quite a decent malty flavor, but it's got that, that typical Green King type flavour just over the top of it as well, which is just okay. It doesn't really do much for me at all. Just a standard run of the mill British ale. I would give that, what would I give that? I'd give it, I'd give it a six out of 10. Would I recommend it? If you walk into a pub and this is on draft or on cask, look around and see what else is on before you buy some of this. It's not bad. It won't put you off the whole night's drinking, but it's just very, very average in my opinion. Doesn't really do much for me at all. And I sort of got that as well. Green King beers are, there's very few that really do much for me. The old speckled hen wasn't bad, I will say that. The 
Abbott Reserve, I quite like that. But everything else, not really my thing, to be honest, which is a shame, you know. They're just up the road from the Adnams Brewery. And Adnams just consistently gets stuff right. And Green King, I suppose they've just been they've been taken over by an asset management company now. They own a lot of pubs. I think they're and there's a Green King pub down the road and it's they're I think they're more interested in selling food than they're selling beer. So that says a lot about the company. But there you go. That is Bellhaven 80 shilling. And remember, beer is working class champagne.